Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Excited to have you here, and excited to have a, a guest today meeting with us, Denise Hildreth, the new program director for Youth and Family Services for the town of Hopkinton. You know, recently, and everyone knows we have such fun chatter on Facebook, I don't even know what the topic was, but there was a comment that came out that caused us to be a little concerned about the person's response. Um, we, had a, we wondered if she needed help of some sort. Um, and then serendipitously, really, Denise, being a new person to the town of Hopkinton, reached out to the Real Hopkinton Housewives to familiarize us with the Youth and Family Services Program. So I'm just excited to have you here. So she's not new to Hopkinton, but new I'm to the program. New Is to that the position. Right? That's right. Well, that's cool. what I meant, new yeah, to yeah. the role. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I want to back up a little bit and have you give us a little bit of your background sure. of just you grew up in town. I did. So I came to town, I think, in third grade. Wow. Um, and I lived in Hopkinton, graduated from Hopkinton High School in 1989, mm -hmm. and left town to go to college and had my son and realized I really needed the assistance of my family in raising him, mm -hmm. and especially childcare while I was working. And so we moved back to town when he was about 10 months old. Wow. And so we've oh, been yeah. here ever since then, and he's going to turn 18 oh, October 3rd. Senior. Wow. A senior in high school <laughs> wow. at Hopkinton High. Yes. So well, we know this and, and you yes. are 25, and you have a senior in high school. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> no. well, I feel every bit of those years. So and you're for a big, a big family here in Hopkinton. You are a, a right. McBride. That's a McBride. Yep. Yeah. My dad was the propane gas guy in town. Okay. Cool. And we come from Leonard Street, and I actually live on Leonard Street next door to my parents. Oh, that's adorable. Right now. Oh, oh very nice. I love it. Yep. Great. So, so now you're um, at Town Hall. I am. Mm -hmm. yep. And tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Sure, so um, my position is Director of Youth and Family Services. So the position was created probably about four years ago, came out of the work of the Hopkinton Youth Commission. Yep. Um, it was originally a part-time position that then went to full-time. The person who was formerly in the position left in December, and it was vacant until June 1st when I came on. Oh, wow. Oh, yep. wow. Yeah. So, and, and a little bit about the mission, the sure, role, sure. the outreach in the community, sure. the services provided. So, the position is funded by tax dollars. So, what that means is... We pay for it. <laughs> yes. Well, what, I say is, what I say is, I work for you all, and I work for the kids of town. Mm -hmm. So, um, my services are free. They're confidential. Um, I do everything from meeting with folks, doing individual family counseling, group counseling, parent consultation, advocacy work, information and referral, um, and I'll also be, so that's sort of the micro or the individual so and family your work. Your degree in social work? My degree is in social work, yeah. yeah. Cool. So I got mm -hmm. my bachelor's degree in social work, I went on and got my master's degree in social work, and I'm actually almost finished with my PhD <gasps> in social wow. work. So yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wow. You all can like send me good vibes to hopefully We're get that finished. Have Absolutely. Soon. I hope so. Oh, I love yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. So Should be Dr. D. Yeah, Dr. it's D. been, I've been working that on my PhD so for a long cool. time. Yeah, so we'll hope. Congratulations! This year, let's hope. Yay! Well, let me ask you. So, sure. the kinds of things that someone would reach out to your sure, your sure. department for yeah. in town. What kinds of things? Everything from um, my little one who's at center school is uh, managing some social issues. I'm concerned. I'm not really sure what's going on. I'd like to meet with you and talk it over. Okay. Is that coming mm -hmm. from the parent or is that coming through the school? Both. Both. So mm -hmm. they might come, they, people just call me because they heard about the program. Um, it also can come through the school. So the teachers, the principals, the counseling departments all sort of know I'm there and know that they're sort of the first line of support for a lot of the students and families, sure. mm -hmm. but that I'm sort of a gap filler, someone that's, you know, their partner in the work. And I might be able to do something to add to what they're doing or something different because sometimes folks, um, are reluctant to work through the schools for whatever mm -hmm. reason that might be. If their child is dealing with some drug use, mm -hmm. they might come to me and say, you know, I'm concerned about this thing that's happening with my child. Um, can we talk it over? And then we make a plan. And they so don't want the school to know. I mean, this is something they might not. They might not. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. you know, and oftentimes what I'll say is it's really good if I can talk with the schools and I ask them to sign, you know, a release of information right. so that it, it's really best if we're all kind of working together, mm -hmm. whoever is involved in the family situation. So divorce, someone has a death in the family, it really is anything that all of us deal mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. yeah, so wow. just everyday 
maybe normal speed bumps to potentially severe yeah, to issues tough stuff. Yeah. And, and anything in between. Right. Um, so, what do a great you, resource. Yeah. I, had, yeah. you know, right. I, I had no idea we had this position even part-time before. Yeah. And how wonderful. I'm so thrilled you're here full-time because, you know, <laughs> Do you do the coaching yourself, or do you refer people out, or so it depends. Just a myriad of things it depends. That people need. So I, I see myself as kind of like um, a general practitioner. So okay. yep. I work with folks around, you know, the, the typical things that are challenges, as well as some more challenging and concerning things like drug use and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's something more advanced or a major mental health problem, I'm likely to refer folks out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And certainly, if I know them, I'll be referring them out. So you know, because sure. I'm from town, because I have kids in the school system, I have to be really careful around you know, making sure that people feel comfortable being able to share whatever it is. Right. And if they know me in another capacity, that, that might not happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's in their best interest and my best interest to say, you know, there are other people in town or in other towns surrounding us where I mm -hmm. trust those people sure. and let me help you to get connected with them. And I imagine if we know of anything or, or if we're concerned about a friend or neighbor, sure. that, you know, not sure how to navigate, that you might be a resource. Call me. Absolutely. For, yeah. Okay. So I can be the person that helps to link them up with services. I might not be yeah. the person that stays with them throughout the length of whatever the challenge is, but for, definitely to link them up. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Very cool. Very and it's cool. more than just the youth. You you deal everybody. with adults and mm -hmm. everybody. I do, so but connected to family. So connected I wouldn't be the person for, say, a single 42-year-old person seeking assistance. That would not be for me. That would mm -hmm. be... Um, so the senior center actually has outreach workers right. okay. that do lots of work in that area. Mary so McLeod used to do it for years. Yeah. yeah. So um, now it's Mrs. Troops. Mm -hmm. um, she's Marley, wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. 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 She's great. So we connect up um, on cases. Sometimes someone might come through her doors. That's actually appropriate for me, or vice versa. So as long as they're connected to something in relation to family, mm -hmm. that's my area. So I assume the pediatricians in town know all about yeah. you too. Yeah. So. And so do you have to make, because you, you just started the position in June, yep. so even though, and, and we'll, I want to hear about your background prior to that yeah, as sure. well, but so you had to go out and make... The, All make, over, everywhere, so everywhere. You, you've been Outreach. a busy, busy summer. Yeah, it's great old-fashioned community social work. Oh. It's the best job you okay. could ever have as a social worker because I get to do what is really the roots of the profession, which is meeting people where they are, assisting people with their lives, seeing people in their homes, and really going out and meeting people, building relationships with all the providers so and folks in town. When Connie mentioned, like, you're in town hall, you work for the town, but you're yeah. not in town hall you're day in and day out. Day out. No, right, no, right. You're out in the community. No, if they see me in my office, it means I'm doing a bad job. <laughs> Except if the door is closed and there's a sign that says meeting in progress. <laughs> right. yeah. Because I shouldn't be sitting there, you know, you should on be my out computer. I should be out. Right. Wow. Yeah. Right. I mean, so, um, you know, are there plans to... I'm just thinking of various ways to engage because right now I feel like we've been talking about adults um, pointing things to you, mm -hmm. but do you go into the schools mm -hmm. and, and do presentations that the kids themselves can come up to you, and, or what's on tap? Yeah. School year's about to start, or sure. you know, will have started, and, and, and all this is going on. How does, how does that work? So I'm available to do whatever it is that the schools would like me to do, uh -huh. also knowing that there are counselors at sure. the school, and they have their jobs, and not to step right. on their job at all, sure. but to know that our jobs link, and to, mm -hmm. and to assist them in any ways that those it's jobs link. It should be collaborative. It's very collaborative, and I think it will be. So I have some groups coming up. One is, um, because we're all aware, I think, that many of our high school students and middle school students have recently lost people in their lives, yep. mm -hmm. deaths of family mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I have a new partnership with the Y, where we're going to be doing a, a collaboration. We love, the y. We love school. Yeah. Um, we love the Y. Yeah, so <laughs> a, good, a good pilot program, I think. It's, a, it's an innovative grief group where there's going to be some traditional grief support as well as an adventure component. So the first couple hours are the adventure component. Mm -hmm. The last hour is me kind of debriefing and talking about the challenges. And so that's a group that will run at the Y for youth 14 to 17. Wow. Um, Which is also kind of like a gap age, a lot of the yeah. things yes. seem to like, you know, around 12, we, we have tons of things like activities up, up to about 12. Right. And then, you know, then they, that high school late Middle school seems to be like, well, they kind of fall off the planet a right, bit. Right. <laughs> well, it, this is kind of interesting because I don't know if you are aware of what we did at the Y earlier in the year, and we're going to have another session. Now, this is more focused towards women mm -hmm. and 
you know, getting outside of your comfort zone, being sure. brave. Yeah. We did the ropes course. Yeah, I might yeah. be doing some of that. I'm, oh, well, and you should do that. We'll scared. let you know when we do it again. Well, you should join us. <laughs> okay. You should. I. It's. I just love hearing that yeah. you're using the why in those facilities, because certainly that facility creates team building, right. bonding. Um, empowerment, self confidence, exactly. Indeed. Yeah. All the tools that, particularly through grief, you sometimes lose sight of, right? And you can find you that feel inner so strength. fragile and so oh, vulnerable. Right. How right. cool! I think it will be cool. So how we'll see cool. how it works. Great and, staff uh, there. So that's a great new thing that we're going to be doing. I'm also going to be having some. I'm calling it parent to parent conversations. Mm -hmm. So a series of conversations throughout the fall um, on things like divorce and separation. Managing when a child goes away to college. Oh, um, that's a big one. I'll be there next year. Yes, I know. I'm thinking I could use it too. Um, adoptive parenting. So a oh, being in the sandwich generation of um, oh, yes. managing your aging yeah. parents as yep. well as caring for your oh, kids. Yep. Um, and I'm going to have some drop-in days. So every Thursday is going to be a drop-in day from 10 to 11. So you have to parents can drop in. Page to promote. Right. You, yeah. Are you on the oh, Facebook yes. page? Are oh, you yours? No, yeah. but well, I can. Mm -hmm. I've been, have to okay. use our yeah. page to Okay. Out. We have a great. We have I mean, to share information. Okay, Absolutely. that'd be great. Absolutely. Thank you. So we'll we'll get that. We'll get yeah. that. Happen. That's great. Please. Yeah. I know a couple months ago we Perfect had Officer of Phil on. So yeah. You must work with Phil some yeah. too. Yeah. So I'll be working like with him, especially around the diversion, the court diversion program. My office will be part of that. So there's a diversion program for, and I hope I don't explain it, um, I hope I explain it very accurately because Phil knows best about it, but when a student in our town gets into some trouble where there would be an arrest for whatever reason, um, there's a process by which Phil and others can determine if this is a person that's a good candidate for more of a diversion program where they can um, voluntarily, voluntarily elect to do something other than go through the court system. Right. And oh. so it involves community service, meeting with someone like me to talk about whatever it was that yeah. happened, um, to talk with their family about whatever it was that happened, to really process it, and for them to do something to kind of make up for it, right. Right. rather than go through the court system and have it on the record. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, and, so and that's key that. and critical because yeah. Yeah. You know, kids make mistakes. Right. <laughs> right. right. And sometimes that could just be the right help. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. So what did, how did, what did you do before coming to Hopkinton? Okay, sure so um, I started my career in youth and family services working with kids and families at an organization called Children's Friend in Worcester. Okay. Great place. They kind of brought me up as a social worker. They took me in when I was an MSW student and sort of put me on committees, gave me cases, told me I was doing presentations and really grew my confidence. Cool. Um, so I worked mostly in adoption and foster care mm -hmm. through a contract with the Department of Children and Families. So I sure. functioned as a DCF worker for lots of kids around the state, but worked for a private agency. Mm -hmm. so, so DCF. Yep, the Department, Department of, of Children, Children and Families. families. Right. Yep, right. so our so Child Protective Agency right. at the state right. level. Right. So mostly working with um, sort of Cases that were difficult for the department to handle, either because there were many siblings and they were spread throughout the state, mm -hmm. or there were a couple cases where um, they were tough because there had been a fatality, and then there was a there were surviving siblings, mm -hmm. and the department was kind of caught up in the controversy of that. So right. those were cases that were often sent out to the agencies that were collaborators to handle because we we didn't have as high caseloads, we could do the work in a different way. So I did that work for a long time, um, and then I was offered a position in academia kind of by chance. A friend of mine was teaching a class. She was going to Ireland and she said, we would teach my class for the three weeks I'm away. Come and talk about what you do. So I went and taught at a school um, in Central Mass at a Bachelor's of Social Work program. Mm -hmm. I loved it and I kind of said, if there's a chance for me to teach as an adjunct, I'd really love to do that. And they said, well, there's actually a full-time job open. You should, <laughs> you should apply. Hadn't thought I would do that. Got there. Loved it, ended up doing that, that job while practicing on the side, and then ultimately I became the program director this there. It's your hot ticket. Yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, was, it was a really good, it was a good point at which that it worked for my family. I learned a lot about young adults, um, and then I ended up at Simmons College. So I went from Central Mass, um, I became a doctoral student, that's where I'm doing my doctorate at Simmons. Mm -hmm. They decided um, probably five years ago when, that they wanted to build a bachelor's of social work program, which did not exist at the time, and they said, would you come and work here and build a new program? So I leaped in there as well, and then that's where I, I was for the last five years, building a new program. We are and they so grateful. Like women's yeah. conference every Good year. Good hire. Yeah. 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 Part of that for the last like, 
three, four years, and yeah, that's a great. great conference. Yeah, no, they're very um, women-focused. And so at the undergrad yeah. level, it's all women. At the graduate level, it's women and men, but it's very much women-centered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I spent um, the last five years doing that, building a new program, but always called back to practice, called back to practice. I, was, I knew I needed to come back to practice when I'd be in classes with my students and they'd be talking about their internships yeah. and I'd be very jealous about what they were doing and really <laughs> wanting to go do what they were doing. Right. And so I made the decision in December that I would um, maybe take some time off to finish my dissertation mm -hmm. And then decide where my life was going to go from there. And then at the same time, this job became available, and in I couldn't pass it up. Right? Yeah. Oh my God! Couldn't pass up the opportunity to try and get this job. And right. so well, that's why I got here. The brilliant decision making that they brought you on board. I'm thank you. So I'm thrilled about it. Just, oh, thank you. Well, your we energy really over the phone. I mean, you reached out, and I, you know that's the first town group that's ever just reached out to yeah. kind of connect. And uh, oh, then I lost track of your name and so forth, but got reconnected. Yeah. And just Excellent. talking with you over the phone, I told Darlene and Connie, we got to have her on. Oh, yeah, it really yeah. feels like I'm so supposed cool. to be here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so the youth services that, um, you know, does the Be Free and all that, does that still exist mm. or is it connected through your office now? So Be Free was the seeds of the position that I'm right. currently in. So there was yeah. a drug-free communities grant that was sought after by the Youth Commission, which was really parents and folks in town, right. um, got the grant. And the Be Free Project was sort of the, the, the nuts and bolts of that grant, and that's how my position came to be. Be Free, over time, has become now a club at the school. That's right. So it's right. a club at the high school. Yeah. yeah. It, it's connected to but us, only that I'll be collaborating with does them. The but but the, that Youth Commission doesn't exist anymore, right? Youth Commission exists. It does exist. Yes, okay. it does. Yep, so they meet monthly, and they and I... I, so I work collaboratively. Yes, I'm a right. member of that group. I'm a non-voting member, uh, but I meet with them. They advise me as to these are the things we see in town. These are the good. things that we see as priorities. What do you think you can do about that? And I, I, you know, in the same respect, sort of say, this is what I'm seeing. How can we create programs around this? Mm -hmm. So if you could, um, I mean, we do have a wonderful Facebook page mm -hmm. and. Um, it's it's actually pretty active. People read. Right. Not everybody the comments. Engagement's huge. The, the engagement's huge. The engagement's huge. Engagement. huge. Sure. Are there a couple of either inputs that you'd like to hear from them, mm. or are there a few things you'd like to reach out on yes. just in the short term? Mm -hmm. I mean, what are some of the things you would like to hear or, sure. or, or communicate? communicate? So one big thing that's happening that I haven't mentioned yet is. Um, the town, I applied for on behalf of the town a grant for substance abuse prevention. And mm -hmm. we were told about, uh, probably it's been about three weeks now that we got the grant. Oh, it's great. part of the state budget. Mm -hmm. um, it's through the Bureau of Substance Abuse yep. Services. It's mm -hmm. $100,000. Wow, nice. Um, that'll be used in this fiscal year. Yes. So by June 30th, we'll be using these funds. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the midst right now of determining how we can best use those funds and have some really strong ideas about the very sort of the legs of the stool of what this grant yeah. is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So from June to now you applied yeah. for that grant and got it. We applied That's it. That's huge. I applied yeah, before yeah. I took my position. Um, the town manager called and said we have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Could you do something? And I of course was at my computer. Yes, yes I <laughs> can. We're not going back up. Um, and so before I started I wrote the grant mm -hmm. and then ultimately we were told that we got the grant later on. Um, and so we need to get moving in terms right. of and I've been sort of all over um, in our community, as well as meeting with folks at the state level, mm -hmm. what's happening around substance abuse prevention? Where are the gaps? What can we do that will right. make a difference here? And so I would love to hear from people about what they think well, about that. If you that. have a little poll or some specific Absolutely. questions, sure. we'll, let's link and we'll get well, yeah. it up. And, and, and I love that. You're working with SMOC and all that, yeah. too, with that, because that, that's a huge focus of theirs, too. That's right. So um, area organizations, um, you know, people at the state level who have been doing this work, and there's lots of popping up of various um, community coalitions, collaborations, programs, and so we're going to be looking to do something that's probably similar to what other communities are doing, and also something that I think is going to be different, that hopefully um, will work better than the ways in which some of the systems of care sure. have been working. Mm -hmm. So if you had the opportunities now to like start meeting with like, you know, Karen Spilka and Carolyn Dykema, and knowing kind of within kind of almost our greater community how we can bridge some of those needs. Yeah, so Karen Spilka I have not met with, but she's the person who's the impetus for the grant. So right. she's the person that contacted the town and said, oh, yeah. um, you really should write something up, which mm -hmm. was incredible, a great opportunity. So she's been the champion of this, this funding. Mm -hmm. um, 
So she's certainly someone that is going to be, you know, part of whatever it is that we decide to do, and someone that we need to thank profusely for giving us the opportunity to do it. She's awesome. Yeah. She's a big she's like, advocate. She's a, a social work. worker. Yeah, I know yeah. That. yeah, I know. Yeah. Karen. She handles Real, all. The, I am her campaign. She, uh, oh, campaign photos. treasurer. Oh, okay. So I, I, okay I, yeah. I, I've been doing it for over ten years. Yeah. Oh my God. So, so, <laughs> I, I, for so I need to actually she, thank her. Yeah. She's us. Awesome. Well, you know what? She doesn't do it for thanks. So yeah. She she wants to thank you because you're taking it and making something happen. So when you think about, um, you know, I'm a firm believer that um, some of the innovative ways uh, come about in how you ask questions. Right. Um, so if I asked you um, to design me a vase to put my flowers in, you'd draw me a vase. But mm -hmm. if I said to you, um, I want to have fresh flowers in my house every day, you know, do something, give me s some ideas around that. You might do something different. Mm. And so when you think about the questions you're asking, what are some of the challenges you want to pose to us as, mm. as you think about how to implement this grant? Um, you know, to say, well, how do we prevent drug abuse is not the question to ask, right. but what are the questions? I know, I'm yeah. mm -hmm. posing this more for everybody else out there. Yeah, sure. What are those nuanced questions that you feel we need to explore and think about in order to best use the grant? I think um, the biggest question is asking families what are the substance use and abuse challenges you are facing mm -hmm. in your own families, in your own homes, in your neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not happening in, happening in your family, is it happening in your community? What have you heard? What mm -hmm. has the mom down the street told you she's facing and has been the biggest challenge? And what I've heard from asking that question to a variety of people is, um, oftentimes parents don't know um, the ways in which drug abuse starts. So mm -hmm. particularly the opioid crisis is huge. Mm -hmm. And I think lots of people have the idea that it starts with heroin. It doesn't. It starts with pain medication. Pain, pain, and, oh. and it's a lot of times the athletes. That's right. So mm. it's athletes. It's, it's the kids that you think right. wouldn't be the ones touched. That's right. They're stars of the football teams, or they, but they've gotten injured and they've had right. multiple concussions. Right. And then one's mm. like, wait a second, this stuff's actually pretty good. Yeah, I feel better. And oftentimes they're given a prescription that's more than what they need. Um, and, and it's also or beyond. They save them up and then double up no, later they and have fun. They, they might, they might. And yeah. so um, helping parents to be educated around why they might be at risk or why their family might be at risk before it becomes a risk for them. Mm -hmm. So asking that question, and I think in towns that are there, there are lots of financial resources, kids are doing well, kids are, you know, have a lot of support. Sometimes the folks that are struggling are very much in the shadows sure. and they are either reluctant to come forward, don't know how to come forward, don't know, as you all didn't know, that there's a person in the town right. hall, right. pick up the phone and call me because I will talk with you, I will help wow. you to find the resources. So to ask people in some ways to be a little bit vulnerable and to come out of the shadows a bit mm -hmm. to at least uh, provide information around what have been the barriers to you getting what it is that you need, whether it's information or services or support. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly want to be a platform for That's great. supporting your oh, communication. I need the I'm help. I'm excited about I this. I am very, yeah. And, and I'm amazed, a well-kept secret, but we don't want it to be a secret anymore. No, right. please no. Right. Very exactly. cool. Exactly. And I, I think like what you said too, was like, you know, families in the shadows, families in the forefront, sure. that there are a lot of opportunities here, but that sometimes that, you know, you look at like if you're starting to call, well, will my health insurance cover it? Well, what's mm -hmm. the cost of all these? Knowing that this is a resource first that like it's already been paid by your taxpayers. Yeah, that's right. And right. You go you're not to getting a so bill for this. No. Get, you're not getting a there's bill. No there, there's no copay. <laughs> right. Right. You know, I you I don't, but it, you know from there you're able to help families who may not have the resources too that's to be right. able to afford private care that's or right. private things. Yeah, and I right. think that's a huge thing when you talk about families in the shadows that. A lot of that comes down to money. Yeah, typically yeah. does. Uh, typically money does. and stigma. They yeah. don't want people. To no, know but that the this you'll is see their the stigma on sure. the p families that are the more the affluent ones yeah. too. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, sometimes the stigma is, is, is the stigma is there for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, you know, when you know, like, okay, I can just pick up a phone and just send my kid away to, right. you know, an outreach camp in Utah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the tough thing I think around this is a conversation that we need to encourage every parent to have with their children because the minute you think your child isn't capable of, then your child is at risk. Right? Yeah, they yeah. Know every child, yeah. and, and they, these kids are all good kids that sometimes have these issues. And, and it's not just drug abuse, it's all, it's all kinds of things, sure. Right. And um, that's really cool. Yeah. 
It's been a pleasure. This yes, been thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, you. thank yeah. you so much. I want to thank you so much for oh, we got these wonderful oh, moms. Yes. We got to get a close-in shot of. La la la. There they are. Very Youth, kind family, of you. and community. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. A little That's hard in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But thank you, Denise. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And was great. we really hope to see you around town. You will. Yes. Yeah. Use the page. Um, I mean, the page is a perfect venue. Sure. For We've you got a, over 1,500 um, active members on the page, conversations mm -hmm. of all sorts. Yeah. Um, the majority all good. of Hoppington women. Yeah. 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 Vast majority. Over, I will take yeah. you up on that invitation for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, and we really hope to see you around the community, and hopefully you'll be back on the show. Yes, thank you. Later yeah. To hear more progress. Um, That's great. We've got another minute and I know or so. The, and I know this fall we're planning on having Karen Spilka on. So yes. You know, that we will be able to even ask her, you know, yeah. our different ideas yeah. and things like that and getting involved. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I've been bad. I, I, um, I, just, I just I was just at our house last her. month. No, <laughs> I had dinner with her last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a really cool lady and, yeah. and she's doing a lot for not only our district but the state. Yeah. And yeah. she is a very huge supporter of social services right. um, and what you're doing. And as I said, she would thank you, um, seriously. Yeah. Um, so. Cheers all. Thank Cheers you. all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, it's all right. Here's to seeing you around town. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good Thank you. <laughs>